All right, so that's God's uh, providence. So we see God's decrees. He uh, carries out the, those decrees with regard to his providence. And now, you know, he wants us to talk uh, briefly about God's omnipotence, right? He says God's sovereign decree and his providential execution of it would mean nothing unless, you know, he possessed the requisite power necessary to make it all happen, right? And so he says that all Orthodox Christians, including most free will theists, right? Those are his antagonists that he, (laughs) you know, dealt with a couple of chapters ago. But all Orthodox Christians agree that God is omnipotent, right? Possessing the power to do anything that is, and this is what you were getting at last time, logically possible, number one, and secondly, does not contradict his other attributes. So if it's logically possible and it doesn't contradict who God is, he can accomplish that. He has the power, the omnipotence to do that. So he gives us a, for instance, right? God cannot perform pseudo actions such as, you know, um, making square circles or, you know, irresistible forces colliding with immovable forces, right? He cannot do anything unrighteous or Uh, unjust, right? So are you saying there's things that God cannot do? Yes, that's what we're saying. That's what the scripture says, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So while God's uh, possession of such power is largely uncontroversial in Orthodox theology, what most free will theists deny is God's unrestricted use of such power. Again, uh, when we talked about free will, we we said that humans seem to have a, a, a far level of freedom that God restricts himself for no other reason than we really, really want free will, this libertarian free will, to, to be true. We, right. we want to be able to do what we want because then we have the greatest maximal uh, independence. And so when we come to God, that's that's when we truly love him is when we come to him and, and we say, we, we've done good. Good job, good and faithful <laughs> servant me. You, you've done it. So, But they suppose that God respects the libertarian free will of humans above his own unrestricted, free, and sovereign manifestation of power. For example, Greg Boyd thinks that God rules by love, not control. But this does not accord with the testimony of Scripture that we have seen thus far. And so it's not this this big, scary uh, God in the sky, although... God can be scary and we can fear him and that's the beginning and of understanding. He can be in the sky. And, 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 and yeah, he can be in the, uh, but he's also uh, wherever you might go. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's better than elf on the shelf. Um, but, but this, this type of control is clarified and presented in scripture. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's kind of, uh, you know, these various pictures of God decree his, you know, his providence, um, and, uh, you know, his, his power to carry out his decree, right. To operate his providence. Right. So that's, those are some of these various attributes of God that he uh, wants us to be aware of in terms of, uh, uh, this particular issue. 